Hi and welcome back to Cheeky Crypto. My name is Nick and today guys we're going to be jumping down into the world of Polygon's Matic to take a look at what's been going on most recently and what we would expect to happen next. As I get into this video if you find it useful and informative smash that like button I do appreciate that if you happen to be new to the channel then why not go ahead and subscribe and uh, you know stay up to date with everything that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. If you haven't joined us in Discord though check it out linked in the description down below it's a fantastic community talking crypto 24 7 it's completely free and I don't think you'll be disappointed by what you find down there. Right Let's get into this. Matic paired up with USDT on the hourly chart and Binance is the data source. And following on from the last video, we were talking about a five wave structural point to the upside. We had our first um, wave three high between 1.12 uh, so $1.12.8 um, and we can see that we worked up exactly to $1.12.8. We did actually have the higher spectrum of $1.14.91 but we hit the minimum expectation for that fifth wave. It was over here. Now because we were expecting it to go a little bit higher we also forecasted a potential low at $1.7.4 and we can see that actually we were pretty close. We did wick down ever so slightly lower. Uh, this was 106.22 and but for the most part we actually consolidated nicely on that 107.4 which is a 38.2% retracement from our estimated highs. Now, of course, we move on up to our expected fifth wave based on this low down here being um, you know, $1.7.4. We were expecting a high between the range of $1.16.02 to $1.18.82. We can see that we did push up right up into this yellow box area and then rejected. So it does look that we have completed our structure. Here is wave three. Here is wave four. And our fifth wave landed right there and if we were to go ahead and use the fibs between these two ranges we can see that we did actually overextend above and beyond that 1.618 and that is quite key it means that this move here is a very interesting one and we might want to you know scrutinize it in the future so we're going to keep that right there uh, that completes five waves up we then move down and then we move up again and what we end up here is we actually pierce this high okay so we have our high up here at 119 flat according to binance and we can see that we wicked up just above this area down here so we first of all come down okay we hit this low then moved up and we went higher than the origin of this level now most people would consider this an invalidation however I'm not such a simple man. Um, and if we actually break this down a little bit deeper, uh, we can actually maybe look at this as A, a running flat, or B, an irregular flat correction. This is actually one of those kind of corrections that comes down, peaks up above the origin level over here, and then comes down. A running flat would not go down lower than the A wave, uh, but an irregular flat would. Okay, these are the two variables. Now, with that, your C wave can only ever be five waves, okay? It cannot contain any a three wave structure. It would not be an irregular flat. So that means that if we are looking for a running flat or an irregular flat correction, we have to have five waves in our C wave. And we kind of see an interesting structure that doesn't really give us a, a clear cut picture to say, yeah, that's definitely what that is, right? That's definitely five waves. I'm not seeing that. Um, I am seeing potentially something here and maybe it's just a bit too early to know and that's why it might be an expanding flat or an irregular flat um, and that's because if we really focus just up here, right, we have this initial draw, draw pull to the downside, wave two, wave three, wave four, come down for five, right? And it might just be that actually that's a wave three and then we have a fourth and a fifth, and that creates our five wave structure. Um, so let's go ahead and scrutinize this a little bit, right? Um, in order for us to make this a five wave structure, we're gonna have to make sure we have five waves here, which one, two, three, four, and five we do. Wave two is three waves, not a problem, it is. And then one, two, three, four, and five coming down here, but this has to be 1.618 times wave one. So we'll go ahead and check that. So we'll just pull this up here. And yes, it is, it completes that structure. So straight off the bat here, we've got five, three, five. We go up in three. You bet it, guys, we're looking for five to come down. Okay, and then that would complete our third wave movement. Mm, yeah, it's going to be tight. Like, there's a lot of stuff going on up here. It's hard to unpack exactly what's going on. Could be three, three, five. Could be five, three, five, three, five, uh, and so forth. Either way, we were expecting five waves under this particular pattern. Um, otherwise, it's not an irregular flat or a running flat. So let's go out with our expectation that we are to pull down, okay? Meaning that we kind of have the fourth wave high point just here. Now, we should not cross higher than 114.75. That means that this is not an irregular flat or a running flat. Um, it would be done and dusted at that point. So we know that level there, uh, 114.75. We shouldn't cross it uh, if we want this to be valid. Then, of course, we come up over here. We can kind of see 
that our expected lows to finish off this wave three structure uh, would be right in here. Basically 108.42 and 109.52. Okay, that there would basically means that we'd expect this fifth wave to finish right in there. Now it could be a diagonal pattern, uh, and in which case if that is a diagonal pattern that we end up seeing down here, expect a lot of overlap. It would be a 3-3, three, 3-3, three, 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 three structure that is five waves in itself, um, and in, in diagonal is possible in this particular area of the chart. Um, once that is done, we'd retrace up and then drop back down again and so forth. So straight off the bat here for Polygon's Matic on this hourly chart, we can see, you know, some from volatility, volatility, if I can get my words out today, um, for, for Polygon's Matic, right, on the smaller time frame. Now let's jump over into the higher time frame. Okay, this is the daily chart. And again, we can see that we did hit this high point ABC structure on the 130.71. Uh, We've broken down. Uh, interestingly, I'm looking at this as potentially a bigger corrective structure overall. A, B, and then down into C. Um, we aren't there yet. Uh, or overall, it's it's an interesting kind of overlapping structure at the moment. A good point to reverse up here, but you know we're not anywhere near where we need to in terms of our lows. We did obviously have the low at 31.60, um, and I'm still liking this as a big corrective structure. Uh, I'll zoom out of this far enough, and we can kind of see that if we do start to break on down from here, then we are going to be potentially quite aggressive in getting cheaper Matic uh, prices. And in terms of consolidation, we are above the daily 200 EMA. We can see it right in here. And we did have a golden cross with the 50 EMA crossing above the 200 EMA. From a weekly standpoint, uh, we don't have a 200 EMA here, um, but I imagine that we would be technically just below it briefly. Uh, if we had more data, we'd be able to see that, but we don't, so that's quite unfortunate. From our stochastic RSI point of view, we are up in the overbought area on this weekly time frame, so I would expect this to be an area of uh, massive resistance. We can also see that this is an area that we had consolidated in before, so let me go ahead and draw on this i'm going to pull this right up into here and we can see that we're right inside this previous area of consolidation up on this side here was a demand area over here it is our area of resistance or supply so was buy buying was occurring over here selling was occurring here we're retesting it it does look like selling is still occurring so this is an area where we would consider this a supply zone this is where the sellers are and we potentially do get rejected from here on our weekly time frame of course we can acknowledge that we're overbought so that is looking uh, very much like we need to kind to see some moves to the downside uh, on that weekly time frame now on the daily on the other hand we are nice and high uh, we are above those emas um, but you know this is not conclusive to say that we can't continue pushing up we could potentially push up a bit more before coming down um, so we want to bear that in mind but essentially on these time frames it's looking pretty bearish at the moment for polygons matic we have to bear in mind that there's a lot of supply of matic that is held up with bankrupt companies uh, and when as soon as that enters the market um, we're going to probably see a lot more selling pressure so kind of keep that in mind now if i remove the uh, stochastic rsi and bring the volumes in we can of course see volume profiles are a lot lower than they were previously on this daily chart so basically we do see a small increase in volume right up here right so as we start to push up in price we can see a small increase in volume it really didn't last anything more above and beyond that of saturday the 14th of january since then the volumes have actually been quite mm, yeah, lackluster. Uh, they've actually been kind of decreasing here, just a fraction. You can kind of see it right in here. Although price has pushed up, volume has dropped down. We should bear that in mind. And that is usually an indication that things are about to reverse on us. From an RSI point of view, we can, of course, acknowledge that we were nice and high here, um, but we failed to come up higher than we were on this side. So that's not too bad. That would actually be potentially a bullish divergence in there, right? So what we have is a higher high in price, but we have a lower high here um, on our RSI. So on the smaller time frame that would look quite positive um, and let me just go ahead and sense check a couple of things with this high up here and we yeah, are at the moment we're okay it does look like some bullish divergence on the hourly chart from our weekly chart mm, no, i'm not too concerned about any of that we do have a little bit of bearishness right in there small bearish divergence just happening right inside here in fact i think there is an indicator that helps anybody identify this um divergence indicator this one just here and um, so we can see that there was bearish divergence over there we're not really looking at anything on that one uh, from our daily standpoint if it ever loads doesn't look like it's going to looks okay um let me just come down into the smaller time frame see if there's anything to be kind of nervous about here nothing being flagged to us immediately and uh, so you can find this indicator if it helps you kind of spot those divergences 
Um, it's basically the divergence indicator in trading view. You should be able to find that pretty easy. So yeah, my expectations, guys, are that we're probably going to have to come down, revisit this little low down here, which will be probably finding support on the 200 hourly EMA. Um, and then we move up a little bit before maybe moving back down again. Do expect some volatility when it comes to Polygon's Matic. If we do finish off a um, an irregular flat correction, down here, then we could end up with a nice move to the upside afterwards. So we'll keep that in the back of our heads as we start to think about the structures that are emerging here for Matic. I'm going to leave the video there though, guys. If you have found it useful and informative, smash that like button. I do appreciate that. If you're new to the channel, then why not go ahead and subscribe, tap the bell, select all the notifications, and in doing so, you will be kept up to date with absolutely everything that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. And all that said, done out of the way, I hope everyone has a fantastic day, and I'll catch you all in the next one.